Welcome to my channel, welcome to get to go Today I'm gonna introduce you to this motorcycle from Zero Motorcycles and my first ride ever on an electric bike. The motorcycle we're talking about today is this pretty beauty here. It's the so-called SRF from Zero Motorcycles and Zero is a brand that is actually 16 years old uh, from I think California in the US and they are kind of pioneers in making electronic motorcycles and so I thought it would be time to finally try some of those because uh, I heard so many great things about them. And as always for me it was important not only to ride it for half an hour but to go on a longer ride with this motorcycle. So I decided to travel with this beauty here for not only one but two but three days. So we have been on the road now for three days and I'm gonna tell you more about my first impressions of this bike. <laughs> So first about this model, this is the Zero SRF and um, the Zero SRF, as you can see, it's a much more road orientated bike and um, basically they have like as well some smaller bikes that are like enduro bikes and then they have a bike that is actually more adjusted to traveling, which is called the Black Forest model, but it was unfortunately not available uh, to get. So I just chose this one because I like the color and um, because I felt that it was very agile and that was actually the first thing that I realized I went on it and um, because I had could decide between two different models this one and um, another one that looked a bit more sporty but basically um, has is kind of like similar from driving to this one and I went like one circle and realized wow this is super agile and I really like it so that's why I chose this bike to ride with. So let's do this. I have my visor open and do you guys hear that? No, exactly, because there is nothing to hear. No engine noise. Actually pretty cool to travel in my opinion. I'm so curious how riding this bike will be. What was my first impression of the motorcycle? It is very different. So the first thing that you will realize is that there is no there is no clutch and you don't have to do anything with your left foot. And that's very different in the beginning because you're so used to clutching and so used to shifting with your left foot. And now all of a sudden there is just nothing on that side of the bike. So you really like like grabbing like air sometimes because you think, oh, now I need to clutch, but you don't. And it's basically like riding newer scooters. Um, some of you might know that um, you just have like the gas handle here and you pull that and then it accelerates and you use this brake and you as well have a back brake here. So that is basically only your right side has to work on this motorcycle with um, gas for accelerating the brake here and the rear brake. And yeah, so I took off and the strange thing is you switch this motorcycle on and the screen lights up and there are like a lot of things standing, but it's absolutely quiet. And you think like, oh, where do I need to start it? And you then push this red button here to the bottom and still nothing happens. And the motorcycle is basically already started so you just go and it doesn't make any noise and that in the beginning i mean i tell it to you now and it sounds a bit strange but it was really a bit strange for me because you never really know if it's on or not on and um yeah and when you started to ride it feels like a bit like a ghost motorcycle because you have no noise and i actually really appreciate that i think that all these very noisy motorcycles are super outdated especially when traveling because the less noise you make, the better it is for you, the better it is for the environment that you're at. So I think that's such a great thing that this motorcycle is 
quiet. It's not completely quiet because um, the tires, of course, make some um, noises on the roads. And as well, you have here, I will show that to you later, you have here at the engine, you have this uh, strap that is kind of like instead of the chain um, that goes here around and that makes the motorcycle move. And this one as well makes a little bit of noise. So you have like these two noises, but it's really not loud. It's very quiet. And um, what is very special as well uh, from my first impression was that it as well feels a little bit different because you have no vibrating from the engine and um, it's very smooth. So for me, it actually felt much more like gliding than riding which I think is pretty awesome because you have really like the feeling that you're like flying over the roads a little bit because there's so less like vibration and so less like, I don't know, things that could disturb you from like the real like experience of being on the road going on. So that's a very new feeling and I think you have to get a bit used to it. But meanwhile, I really, really appreciate it and like it a lot because to me, it's really not that important that you feel like this huge vibrations and um, this huge noise. So um, I find that really fantastic. Maybe some data about this motorcycle. They are really not that lightweight and um, the funny thing though is that this one here is supposed to have I think like 220 kilograms I as well will write it here again so you can see it and um, but it doesn't feel so happy and I think it's because the um, weight is very low in these motorcycles for example my tannery um, that's I mean that's 20 kilos less than this one but um, the weight is kind of like not completely like in the lowest and um, it's a very high bike. So in my opinion, when handling it, my tannery feels much more um, heavy than this one because you're as well so close to the ground and um, it's very easy to pedal with your feet and to move it. So I didn't uh, find that these 420 kilos that are quite a weight are actually disturbing or are a problem. So I don't think that this um, matters too much. And here is as well why this bike is so heavy because you might think yeah that looks not that big and um, quite compact. What is the heavy part about this motorcycle? And indeed the heavy part about these kind of bikes is the battery and the battery is everything that you see here. This whole box that you see here in the front of the motorcycle. And alone this battery weighs 90 kilograms. So that's basically um, half the bike is really the weight of the battery that you have here. And yeah, then I think we come to the topic that is most interesting and most important for people who travel on or who ride a motorcycle is how does that work with these electric motorcycles, the batteries, where do you charge them and how far can you go? And um, this motorcycle, it really depends, and that's a big difference too to the normal bikes that I ride. With this motorcycle, it really depends a lot on how fast you go. Because normally when you ride a normal um, motorcycle with a normal engine, um, so you can go in a high gear, but don't um, give too much gas. And that's basically where you have the least gas consumption. And this one is very different. So if you drive this one kind of stable on a highway or autobahn with, let's say, like a speed of 110, 120 kilometers per hour, then the consumption is much, much higher uh, of, of the electricity than if you drive 70 or 80 on a countryside road. And you really have to think about that because the normal range of this motorcycle, I would say, is between 100 kilometers and 200 kilometers. And if you go with, I would say like 80, 90 kilometers per hour on a countryside road, you probably will make 160, I would guess. And, but the first day that I rode this, we had to go on the highway a little bit and drove a speed of 120 kilometers per hour. And um, I was down to, I think, 25% when I hit the 90 kilometers. So there would have been, of course, some additional mileage that I could have done, but I felt safer to then charge it. So I only did like 90 kilometers on the highway with it and then charged it again.
So this is the first time I want to charge with this here and not on a federal station. Very exciting. So this first one is not working. Uh, I have to find the next charging station. First charging of this bike successful. How does the charging of this kind of motorcycle work? I brought here one of the cables that you use for it. And um, the motorcycle comes with two different cables. First, it comes with one of the cables that you can plug into this um, stations for electricity that you often find in cities or gas stations that provide this um, quick charging. And the second cable is the one that you see here at the moment. is a normal cable that you can um, put like to a normal electricity uh, outlet and that charges from every electricity outlet that you're gonna have and you open actually this one here where normally your tank would be and you can then plug this side into here and this one you plug in your normal box and then you have to just press this button here and then it's gonna charge it is quite different, I have to admit, because you're not looking for gas stations as much anymore because in Germany, the smaller gas stations, they usually don't have electric uh, charging for electric vehicles. So you're much more, there are like different kinds of apps and um, you download one of those and then you're mostly fine and you can find all um, charging stations all over the country. And so you're not looking for gas stations anymore, but you're looking for these charging stations or you're looking for people who just let you plug your motorcycle in their electricity outlet. And that is actually quite nice, I think, because whenever we went now on this trip to a restaurant, we knew, hey, better charge the bike. So we asked the guys when we stopped somewhere for lunch, uh, we asked the people, hey, can I maybe charge my motorcycle on your electricity? And um, mostly they, they just yes, and they put out like a little cable and then you can like charge it. Hallo Herr Künstler. Ja. Herr Künstler, ja. kann ich mein Motorrad bei Ihnen kurz anstecken? Aber für anstecken? Strom? Ja. Ganz normale Steckdose. Ganz normale Steckdose. Hier, einfach And that is actually pretty cool because you have so much more contact with the locals. Plus, it's of course cheap. So far on this whole journey, I didn't pay one load of electricity because we always charged it or I always charged it at um, private people's homes or there were as well two um, official charging stations, but they were state supported. So they were as well for free. So that is really a huge difference. I mean, you really don't need to pay for any gas with this motorcycle. One frequently asked question that I forgot to answer in this video, how long does it take to charge the motorcycle? If you use the quick charger on the electricity outlets that you as well charge electric cars on, your bike is loaded up to 95% within an hour. If you use normal sockets, it charges slower. I actually don't know how fast exactly, but I just plugged it in overnight and it was 100% charged the next morning. It as well makes a difference where you live. In the US you have a standard of 110 volt, in Europe 230 volt, so it will charge faster in Europe. So is the charging um, annoying? I think for me having a bike and um, being really probably able to travel with, I would say these bikes need to gain maybe the double of the range that they have at the moment or maybe at least like a hundred kilometers or so on the highway more because otherwise for me the distances feel slightly too short to um, really be able to travel with it. But I really think if you're someone who more travels like in a city, who rides um, his bikes through city traffic or who just goes on little trip around their hometown, then I think these bikes are absolutely perfect. You charge them at home, uh, they are ready to ride, you never need to go to a gas station, you don't con consume any fuel and that's pretty pretty good. So I'm driving 70 kilometers per hour now and I will show you now how fast this bike really accelerates. Let's go! 
oh, now I have to slow down. Um, I don't want to lose my license because of crazy speeding, but I guess you can get an idea. Those motorcyclists here, they are strong. It's literally, I mean, when you accelerate, it goes like off. It's so much faster than every other bike or vehicle that you have probably driven before. And um, that is actually pretty cool. And as well from driving, I mean, when you're going to curse, for me, it felt pretty much like every other motorcycle. I didn't have any, I didn't feel like there are huge differences to the other bikes that I rode before. So riding this bike, it's super agile and it's so much fun in curves. It's really amazing. I like how it feels when it goes into curves. I like, like especially how it um, goes off out of curves when you accelerate again. And yeah, that is just super cool. And yeah, this bike is made for riding curves and going like on some small, nice countryside roads. I think that's like the perfect companion to have there. One of the biggest downsides of this motorcycle is probably that it is really not that cheap. This one here, um, as it is here, is about 20,000 euros. And so if you um, add the, the, you can as well get heat, heated handlebars, um, so you get, can get like a premium version of this motorcycle. Um, that adds up, um, I think, like 2,000 more. So I think in the premium version, you can get this one for 22,000 euros. That might sound like a lot, but I really think that you have to consider that you're first not using any fuel. And the other interesting thing is there are not so many parts that you need to service. It's not that you have to do like a 1000 kilometer service like with your other motorcycles. There is like no, um, no things that need to be adjusted all the time because it's basically really just this electric engine and um, this string, um, the chain and the motorcycle is driven with. And um, I was told that these are basically the only um, spare parts that need to be um, exchanged. So they suggest to uh, the only thing that you, that you basically need to do is to change the brake fluids every year. And then the chain of this motorcycle, um, that is actually not a chain, I will find the right, uh, the right word for that and put it here. But yeah, um, so this thing has to be exchanged every 20 to 30,000 kilometers. So basically I would say like a normal chain on a motorcycle um, and that's the two things that you really have to do with this bike. And I think that's actually a pretty great value for not having to do all these service things that you have to do with normal motorcycles. Now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about the menu that we have here. So you're turning the motorcycle on and you see this uh, very nice screen here and um, now I have the charger in. So you see the screen here and um, there are several things that you see. You first see that you can switch your modes. You can change the modes here. You even can change the mode while riding. So you have the different modes. You have the echo mode, which of course, as it says, is the most electricity saving mode. And I was riding with that several times when I knew that I don't have so much range anymore and then I switch to that so it really runs like on the lowest um, possible. Then you have the rain mode um, which has the most traction of course for wet roads and um, it's pretty good. Yesterday it was raining. I felt very comfortable on this bike. It didn't slip. I mean we as well didn't do anything crazy but um, you realize the rain mode I think even is like the weakest one from the acceleration to really keep you safe and you know this bike really goes like crazy if you have the sports mode on and yeah so there's the normal street street mode which was one that I used often because I found it very comfortable especially when riding through cities and you still have a lot of oomph but not too much and then there is the sports mode and the sports mode of course is the most uh, electricity eating one 
but as well the most fun to ride because here you have like this immediate res immediate response of the uh, gas and it's just pretty amazing and you really feel what this motorcycle can do and that is pretty cool so riding this motorcycle the only real difference that i felt is that you have to be a bit more careful especially if you're driving sports mode with the gas because it really responds pretty quick so you don't have like this you know when you clutch and you go you don't really need to do like a whole hand turn to make it moving it's really i mean it really jumps if you just put it a little bit but um, you get a feeling for that super super quick and you have as well kind of the engine brake um, so if you leave off the gas it's not just rolling um, that will as well start like you're used to to have this engine brake and um, so it will slow down a little bit and i found it actually quite convenient in most of the modes and um, very good adjusted because i really felt that i didn't need to brake that much i mean it kind of slowed down um, always enough in front of traffic lights of course in the end you need to brake a little bit but um, that is very good and the cool thing about this motorcycle is that you can as well have your customized modes so you have these modes and you can decide yourself um, how much um, power do i want to have how much traction do I want to have and how much of this engine braking do I want to have so you can really adjust this motorcycle 100% to what you're liking and how you're riding. I think I don't need to tell you so much about um, the brakes and um, the wheels and everything because those are pretty similar to all other motorcycles that you know um, the brakes the brake discs and um, the tires i think i'm on pirelli tires actually and yeah completely normal tires fit on these motorcycles so there is not too much a difference to that how is it with the luggage this motorcycle as you can see um, is not it's quite sporty it's a naked bike and um, it's mm, it's main purpose is probably not traveling so the version um, that's called black forest of zero motorcycles is much more adapted to traveling and i think it as well has suitcases and the top box while this one only has the seat here in the back but even with that um, they have like the they have some places here where i could attach my straps and even with that it was very easy to just attach my bag and that's the normal bag that i carry as well on my tannery so it's really not a problem to have like this bigger bag that i always carry here on the back of this motorcycle so for one bag that you can put on top it's perfect so i think there remains pretty much one question would i take this motorcycle for a long adventure trip somewhere and i would say at the moment maybe not yet i love it i love the technology i think that we're heading in the right direction with figuring out new possibilities about being more friendly to the environment and um, developing new ways as well of traveling and getting around um, at the moment for me the range is not there yet but if I would get a motorcycle to ride around town, I would definitely consider those because I really found and find it super convenient. I as well find it so convenient that you don't need to go to a petrol station anymore. So it's so far maybe a no to traveling as long as it doesn't have like a range of maybe 100 kilometers more, but it's a definite yes if you ride in like a circle of 150 kilometers and uh, use it for city use or short trips in the mountain so that's a definite yes thanks so much for watching i hope you enjoyed this review even though i was only traveling with this motorcycle for three days and not like normally months and thirty thousands of kilometers i just think we really should try new things every now and then because it's just amazing fun and you get to know so many people and find so many new adventures from trying new things and i really liked my three-day adventure with this little one from zero motorcycles i hope you liked this video and i hope you tune in again next thursday 
and see you here on the channel. Get to go! Next Thursday at 7.30 p.m. Central European Summer Time, I will do a live chat here on the channel. I will reveal my new adventure and answer as many of your questions as possible. In the comment section below this video, you'll find my pinned comment where you can already drop your questions. Otherwise, just tune in next Thursday. I'm looking forward to see you guys live and in color.